Yo, 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 what is up, jabronis? So, uh, I mean that in the good way. There's, like, two definitions of that word. Anyway, uh, so, this is the sound we'll be making. We're just gonna jump straight into it. So, we're just gonna be using Spire. Kind of make something very simple. So, to follow along, my MIDI notes are G, uh, G1 for the, for the low octave and G2 for the higher octave. So, I'm keeping it very simple. This whole thing is super simple, and it's really more about kind of the processing and the layers you tr uh, you choose to add on. So I'll show you my layers later, but this is the main sound right here. And so one of the cool things I'm doing here is I'm also using a utility to go in and out of mono. So I'm automating the on and, the device on and off so that way the width uh, will go back to mono when it's on and it makes it really cool when it's off. So let me see if I can show you that real quick. So bam, just like that. So in these parts where it's up, that means it's in mono and it makes it sound really awesome like this. So it's a really cool way to kind of play around with the space. So uh, other than that, uh, I guess I'm just gonna show the whole processing first since we're just gonna take it off right now and then get into the patch. So. Uh, you guys have seen me use this plugin before. It's called uh, the Voxango MSED, and it's a free plugin at Plugin Boutique, and it's a really awesome mid-side plugin. So I really would recommend picking up this company's freeware. Uh, it's really good stuff. So I also use their um, analyzer a lot, which is like the best analyzer I've ever seen, even for free or not. Like it's it's a really good one. So all I did was just boost up the side, um, just by like a dB or so, like around. 1.8 so really that's kind of the way you're supposed to use these kind of plugins very subtly just very small increments of boostage I've shown you guys extreme cases where I boost like crazy with this plugin um, it's not really you really have to kind of be smart about using mid-side plugins so just little settings like that just a little bit of notches is uh, all you need to do just to really emphasize more of the width and sides and then I use the distortion plugin called vinyl distortion inside of Ableton and this is, uh, it's kind of weird because I wanted to get more crunchiness out of this, but it also is a really good way to make things sound wider. So if I take it off real quick and add it back in, just by distorting the sides, uh, because obviously you can see I have this in soft and in stereo, um, just by distorting the sides like that, it just sounds really like it just sounds a little bit wider or it sticks out a little bit better so it's easier for things to cut through um again i wouldn't recommend using this on every single track just the ones that you want kind of make pop anyway let's turn this rack off so and then you guys have seen me use the my midi scale effects rack so this is just a rack that i i throw on certain instrument tracks um so basically all it is is a scale to kind of keep my uh my pitch, like when I do pitch effects with this uh, pitch plugin, um, the scale is really useful because I can automate it down an octave or up an octave and it still stays in key and in scale. So uh, that's a really good combination of these two plugins. I usually don't use scale for writing, I just use it for automation purposes when I'm doing that kind of pitch rising stuff. And then uh, we have a note length just to kind of control the MIDI and it's kind of a, more of an effect also. So. You know, we're just going to turn that off as well for now. So by itself, this is what it sounds like. So let's get into it. So first thing you want to do is initialize Spire, and then we'll start there. I'm just going to go like follow my own settings because I just made this, so I don't really, it's not like something I memorized, or it's not like a technique or anything. It's just sort of like a combination of certain oscillators I was just messing around with. So it's just easier for me to go through the tutorial like this as opposed to you know, memorizing a random setting I made. So let's start with oscillator one and we're gonna set this to FM. FM's really cool at this synth and we're gonna set this wave to vocal six so it should be kind of far down, right around there. Really cool sounding by itself already. And we're gonna put the wavetable up all the way, well the mix of it. So we're going to put this up all the way, we're going to bring control B all the way down, and we're going to leave everything in the unison and the mix kind of at default. Um, actually, I think I brought the width up all the way, so just make sure the width is up all the way, the ANA, the key track is on, 
and make sure it's routed to filter one. So now let's go to oscillator two. So oscillator two is gonna be a classic. We're gonna go to alarm two, so that's the one all the way at the bottom. Um, and we're gonna bring this down an octave and we're gonna bring control A up all the way and we're gonna put control B at 544. Now let's go to the unison. So we're gonna set this unison to four voices. Um, we're gonna detune it so the more voices you add, the more you can kinda of get a more detuned sound. And so we're gonna leave the detune at around 765 and density at 454. And we're gonna bring the width now in the mix section to around almost 600, so like 594. The Anna and key track will be on again, and so we'll, uh, it'll be routed to filter one. So now let's go to oscillator three. So this is just a simple saw wave right here. So all you have to do is basically nothing here, just bring the volume up. So uh, I'll go back to the amp envelope, uh, the oscillator amps in a second. Um, so let's continue in the oscillator three unison section. So we're gonna put this on three voices and we're gonna go to, uh, we're gonna detune this to 845 and we're gonna put the density around 595. And we're gonna bring the width slightly up, so around 65. And all these other settings are just like all the other oscillators. So now, uh, let's go oscillator four, but let me really quick just uh, show you the oscillator amps. So the first oscillator is at 914. Second oscillator is brought down um, to around 755 and oscillator 3 is up all the way. Oscillator 4 is around 870. So now we'll go back into oscillator 4 and we can see it's just default settings here and oh okay just making sure I wasn't looking at oscillator 3 really fast since they are similar. I think I might have even done a copy paste and then change a few things. So uh, now let's go to the unison second uh, section and that's four voices here as well. We're gonna detune this to 775, and density is gonna be right down the middle. And we're gonna bring the width up on this one to around 905. And that's about it for the oscillators. So uh, we'll now go down here to uh, our matrix, because this is kind of a big part of this, uh, this type of lead and that kind of sound where there has to be a lot of detunage and a lot of like little modulation effects with pitch. So I went into the matrix window, and in slot one I just inserted the envelope two, which we'll see in a second. And I put all the oscillators, so I just grabbed oscillator one pitch, oscillator two pitch, and so on and so forth. So I did all the oscillators, I just selected all their pitches, and I brought them all to around six, so, uh, or 600 I should say. So for the amount, I put this first oscillator at 613. Second oscillator is, uh, well, let's move it up to around 613. And third oscillator, let's see if we can get them all at 613. That would actually be great. I, uh, if you're gonna be de like doing detuning effects, it's really a good idea to like have them all at the same value or the same amount of, of pitch modulation just because that sounds a little bit cleaner. Um, sometimes you might prefer having them slightly different just so you know there's a, a more widening kind of thing happening, but I think it sounds fine just like this. So that's all we're gonna do there. So let's get out of the matrix window and let's go back to envelope one. So envelope one is our main envelope for the synth. So you know these are our main this is our main shape right here. So we're gonna leave the decay or we're gonna set the decay to around 471, sustain to around 287, and we're gonna bring up that release to around 333. Now I like this kind of shape uh, just because I really like, I don't really want that full decay and full sustain all the way at the top and then no release. Um, in this case I kind of like it like this because it feels like it kind of comes back a little bit. So it kind of feels a little bit more, I, I really don't know how to describe it, but it just feels a little bit more choppy and a little bit more aggressive to play. It kind of makes you want to play faster type of progressions and rhythms, so. I don't know, um, that's just a preference. And then I also threw the shape drive, so the shaper drive. Um, so basically from here, shaper drive, and we're just gonna set the amount of that to around 910, and that's basically it, so it's gonna just follow this mod, uh, this envelope here. 
And let's see, what else did I do? So we did use the envelope too for uh, for the pitch. So all this is, we're just gonna leave the attack all the way down, bring that decay up to around 160, and that's it. So that's gonna be what is gonna mess around with our pitch. So now let's go LFO1, which I which I was using, but I think I took it off. Um, it was just a little thing I was doing with the oscillator amps, and it was kind of a cool thing, but I guess I decided against it, so we'll skip it. And that's really it for the envelopes and the LFOs and all the modulation and stuff. So one important thing is I did bring the, the glide up to 220, so, you know, that way. Between, like, changing the octaves or different notes, you know, there's a little bit of a nice glide in there. So I always like a little bit of that. And so now let's go to the filter. So the filter is basically, we're just going to do one filter here. So we're just going to go to Scorpio and we're going to set a black low pass 4. So we're going to set the cutoff to around 610 and that's it. That's it for our filter. So the reason why I'm applying that is because I just want to kind of shave off a little bit of that noisy top end. So for me, I really hate that noisy, kind of buzzy top end so it's always good to just cut it off and then deal with it later you know but you know you don't want to cut too much out in the sense you kind of want to have enough there to kind of still have excitement because if you start uh, low passing too much then you're really killing a lot of the exciting frequencies so anyway let's now go into the shaper so uh, for this we're going to set a tube 2 and we're going to set the drive to almost a, a little bit past halfway at 545 and we're going to low cut it around 134 and we're going to bring the dry wet up all the way so let's see i also think i moved the high cut to around 665 the bit and the rate are basically where they are by default all right so now we're going to do the chorus so you guys know i like to detune my synths with chorus uh so we're just gonna bring the delay to around 140 we're gonna set the rate to around 540 and then we're gonna low cut it around 195. Uh, we do. Uh, it's up to you if you want to low cut it. I just kind of prefer leaving the low, low end, even though I'm gonna probably like high pass it out later. Um, I, I just kind of like keeping that the way it is as opposed to detuning it. But you know, it sounds way cooler if you just detune everything without cutting. So again, it's up to preference and how you want to do it. And then we're gonna go feedback, and we're gonna put that 350 depth at 680 and no high cut and with you know those would just be up all the way and we're going to set the dry wet to around 409 so there's no delay or reverb or phaser so we don't need to look at those so the last few things i did was just bring up the x comp which is just a multi-band compressor inside of uh, this synth so obviously you don't want to push this too far because it sounds to sound too squashed and too compressed and like shit so uh, we're just going to bring it up a little bit. I believe there's like a really nice sweet spot with this synth. So you just kind of have to find it in this area right around here. So we're going to set this to 90. And then I'm going to tuck the volume down to around 240. So it's going to be really quiet for you. But the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want to get plug-in distortion by, you know, going too hot with the levels. So I'm, I'm going to keep it low. And then with the, everything else we add in, it's going to make it... Uh, a bit louder and I, I already have this pretty low on my track so I'm not worried about it clipping I'm just worried about plug-in distortion so when things are too hot inside the plug-in uh, there's a natural type of distortion thing that happens so it's not necessarily clipping it's just just something you gotta watch out for and luckily in Ableton we can kinda monitor you know our plugins like from here so it has nothing to do with the track volume it's just kind of you know how the signal is going so uh, other than that, I think that's it for Spire. So you should have something like this. Let's see, what octave am I in? So C1. Okay, so that's kind of it. Very simple. So let me sh be sure. Okay, so now we're gonna. I'm gonna show you those layers. So um, obviously, this is a really cool, like little lead by itself. So, um, but everything always sounds better with the right layers so my layers are they sound cool by themselves but they really can't carry apart by themselves so these are my two layers so and what they both share in common other than sounding really lame is that 
they're really short and percussive, so that really helps emphasize some of this. So, so all together. See, now you get the idea there. So, all this one is, is kind of the si similar processing um, as the track before it, or above it. And I just added a little wow filter to kind of just, uh, you know, throw in some nice crunch and filtering. And I think this patch here is called Dinosaur uh, Dinosaurs Kill Dinosaurs. Uh, this is on my Facebook page. It should be like the bottom pack at the bottom of the free download section. So... I didn't do much, I must have tweaked it, and it's playing the same MIDI notes, and then this is uh, this other layer is just uh, a silent patch, uh, again that's from my bank, it's called Case Days Saw, and we can see the EQ's there and all that crap, and the same MIDI scales rack from before is there, so obviously I added a little bit more length to this, but obviously the gate is further closed, so it's really tight, so without that it sounds like this. So I keep it really nice and tight so that way it's only serving as like that kind of uh, l like a transient almost. So I'm just trying to really get it down to almost a really nice percussive transient. So those are the layers. Um, you know, obviously without them it sounds really plain. And then vice versa without the layers by themselves without the lead. It's just lame. So you kind of have to sort of imagine it already in your head how it's going to sound and that's kind of the only way it, ha it kind of happens um so yeah the layers all you, the real takeaway from the layers is that you can keep it simple and short and if you kind of imagine like the waveforms and like the beginning transients being like one part and you know the rest of the lead being like the main body of it uh, that should kind of help you with layering a little bit with these kind of things. Things that don't really rely on harmonics or things like that. Or imaging even. Anyway, that's basically it. Hopefully you guys like this. And lights.